Welcome to my talk about the AD timeline project. I will present you how to do threat hunting with Active Directory data. I am Leonard Sabina. I do digital forensics and incidents response at SortFR. SortFR is part of ANSI, which is the French National Cyber Security Center. You can reach me on Twitter at LDAP389. Let's look at the agenda. First, I will present you how we do data collection and forensic analysis on an Active Directory domain. Then, I will present you the AD timeline collection script and explain you what Active Directory replication metadata is. Then, I will show you how we do analyze this data with the AD timeline application for Splunk. And finally, I will present you how to enhance your traditional event log threat hunting with Active Directory data. So when we perform a forensic analysis on an Active Directory domain, we collect a few things. First, we collect the Active Directory data itself by using the edit timeline uh, PowerShell script. The script is open sourced and available on GitHub. Then we will uh, deploy the DFIR ORC uh, program on every uh, member computer. DFIR ORC, which we also call ORC, is developed in C and was open sourced last year. It is also available on GitHub. Finally, we will collect uh, some network logs. So let's have a look at the data collection process. We'll extract network logs from security devices and put them on a central storage. We will run the PowerShell AD timeline collection script against every domain. Then on every domain, we will also uh, deploy the ORC uh, collection tool against every uh, member or workstation. For this, we can use um, a group policy object setting up a scheduled task. We can also use uh, in-place uh, deployment tools such as SCCM or Lambdas. ORC will collect a forensics artifact on the Windows uh, computer. It will put those artifacts in archives, and those archives will be uploaded via the bits of SMB protocol on a central storage. So once we have all this data, we can bring it uh, to ANSI for uh, processing on or on analysis. And we can also uh, do the analysis uh, on site with a dedicated forensic server. Just a quick focus on uh, DFIR ORC, uh, which is a program that collects forensic artifacts on uh, Windows hosts. It does so by uh, using um, embedded tools such as uh, GetSys, which will uh, collect artifact using a low-level interface in order to prevent uh, hooking. It also has an embedded uh, MFT parser. You can, in ORC, embed some third-party tools such as a Sys internal autoruns, a memory acquisition tool, any tool you'd like. You can so retrieve the output from a common line that you will launch on the system. So ORC is a modular uh, collection program, and you can set it up to collect any artifact you want. Please read the doc, which is available on github.io to configure your own uh, ORC uh, collection configuration. So once we have collected all this data, we will uh, start the investigation. Firstly, we will create uh, an index in Splunk for the new investigation on a new relational database. So network logs and the AD timeline data will be indexed in Splunk. 
Regarding the ORC archives that contain the raw artifacts, such as event logs, registry, boot code, and so on, it will be parsed by Python parsers, and some of this data will be indexed in Splunk, and some other will be imported in the relational database. All this import process is orchestrated via Apache Airflow. So once all the data is imported, our forensics analyst will start to do some threat hunting queries. And he might spot some malicious activity and find out some IOCs. Those IOCs will be capitalized in the malware information sharing platform from the circle. On the other end, we will export existing IOCs from MISPs and compare them with our data set to see if we have a match. Once the investigation is over, our threat intel team will capitalize on the incident by using the OpenCTI project, which is an open source project developed by CERTU on CERTU. So now let's focus on the AD timeline collection script. The AD timeline collection script retrieves uh, Active Directory data itself, meaning the object and the attribute value, but also AD replication metadata, which gives you the time at which each attribute for a given object was last changed. As a consequence, the modification you will retrieve are partial. If the same attribute on the same object is modified subsequent times, you only have the information of the last modification. But for every modification, the version number is incremented. So replication metadata do not apply to non-replicated attributes, such as bad password count attributes. Replication metadata uh, can be retrieved using PowerShell, that's what the AD timeline collection script used, but it can be also retrieved using the repadmin command line tool. So here is an example of the repadmin uh, command line run against the HR underscore RW group. You can see that you have an upper part on the, the result output on the lower part. The upper part is for the replication attribute metadata value, which apply to all attributes in the Active Directory. The lower part is for the replication value metadata that only applies to linked attributes, such as the member and member of attributes. So let's read the output from the repadmin common, which is run against the HR underscore RW group. So firstly, we have the group creation at 527, because we are looking at the when created attributes. Then we can tell that at 530, the user Rurik was added to the group. Then at 539, the description, the group description was edited. We can tell this is the second time the description is edited, but we do not have an idea of the time of the first modification. And finally, at 5.44, the user Morty is removed from the group. So you can see that by just reading the replication metadata, you have a timeline of the modification occurring on the Active Directory object. So what the AD timeline collection script do is that it will um, collect object considered of interest in the Active Directory, and for each object, it will retrieve its uh, replication metadata. Then this replication metadata will be sorted by last originating change time. As I've already said, the timeline is partial. It is also a snapshot of your Active Directory of, at a given time. If you want to properly monitor your Active Directory modification, please do use security event logs by configuring Windows audit policies on setting up a centralization of those events with a Windows event collector. So AD timeline script can be run on a live domain. It also has an offline mode. 
meaning that if you have a domain controller disk image, you can extract from this image the Active Directory database, mount it, and run against it the uh, PowerShell script. So now we will see how we do analyze the data collected by the edit timeline collection tool. For this, we use a Splunk app, which is available on Splunk base. The so edit timeline collection script uh, generates the edit timeline uh, in a CSV file. So we will apply it the edit timeline source type uh, in order to index it in Splunk. And there will be some of uh, Field extraction performed. Fields such as distinguished name, object class will be extracted. Regarding the Active Directory objects themselves, they are exported in an XML file, and we will apply to it the AD object source type. Some field extraction will be also be performed on the attributes such as distinguished name, service principal name, and so on will be extracted. The edit timeline application for Splunk gives you some dashboard for analysis. Those dashboards are Active Directory General Information dashboards and Active Directory Threat Hunting dashboard. So we'll have a look at those dashboards. First, you have a getting started page that shows you how to index the data in Splunk. So let's move on to the first dashboard, which is the Active Directory Infrastructure dashboard. For each dashboard, you have to pick up your index, fromage, which is cheese in France, and then the domain that you want to analyze. So first, you have information about um, Active Directory Schema version, if Exchange is installed in the domain, if uh, what security features are enabled or not. Uh, information about uh, trust, if we have uh, an intra-forest on the, the child domain, uh, in, which is a child domain on the Interforest Trust. And then you have information about service connection points. And finally, you have the Active Directory Infrastructure Timeline, which gives you the change occurring on the domain. We will click on the trusted domain uh, object class in order to just have the timeline of the uh, domain trust modification. So we can see that we have the proper field extraction with the two trusts that are listed here, and we are looking at their distinguished. Let's move on with the next dashboard, which is the sensitive account dashboard. So firstly, you have an inventory of the privilege accounts, then a timeline of, of those, on the modification occurring on those privilege accounts. So, uh, for example, we can uh, look at the domain admin group and we can uh, click on it in order to have a timeline of the modification occurring on this particular group, which is the domain admin group. And we can click on the member attributes in order to get the object which were uh, added or removed from the domain admin. So now let's move on with the threat hunting uh, dashboard. First one is the investigate a time range dashboard. So you will have to pick up your index, fromage, the domain. And now you will have to select a, a time frame because it's the investigate time frame dashboard. So firstly, you have the raw uh, timeline of uh, change occurring within this time frame. Then you have some panels showing you stats about uh, the modification. Then you have a dedicated timelines. On each timeline, you have a MITRE ATT&CK uh, technique mapping. So first timeline is about items created and deleted within the time frame. The second one is about a group membership modification and access control list modification. And uh, last one is about a group policy object modification occurring within the time frame. So here we can see that the default domain policy was modified during the period of interest and that the domain policy has a, a scheduled task configured. So it might was investigating this scheduled task. It was used in a recent case to deploy a ransomware. 
Last dashboard is about track suspicious activity. It is uh, it gives you a general panel that will try to highlight some suspicious activity, such as uh, users that were added or removed from group uh, within a short time frame, a suspicious uh, SID history addition, uh, modification occurring on a group policy object configuring uh, audit settings. Uh, possible um, uh, DC uh, shadow operation, uh, possible uh, mail exfiltration occurring on your um, exchange on prem, uh, and so on. So you can also uh, combine the analysis of uh, Active Directory data with the uh, event logs. We have shown in the first part that we do index the uh, AD timeline uh, data in Splunk, but we uh, do also index the event log uh, collected on every uh, member uh, computer uh, in, uh, in Splunk. So with both data, we can perform some Active Directory educated queries and um, answer some questions such as, did a privileged user account perform a usual account logon? Or did a service account sponsor processes not related to its service? So let's have a look and try to answer our first question, which is, uh, did a privileged uh, user account uh, perform a usual account logon? In an ideal world, a privileged account will only log on uh, tier zero machines, meaning a domain controllers on privileged uh, access workstation. Unfortunately, tier zero is uh, too rarely um, implemented and we never see it happen. So if you want to retrieve a privileged account, we will perform the following LDAP query against our Active Directory. We are looking at uh, object class users on the network, so basically user object, having an admin count equal to one, means accounts that are or were privileged. Uh, you can see that you can retrieve their SID value. If you are looking at account logon, you will look at uh, event ID 4624 from the uh, security event log. And you can see that the target user SID is the SID of the user performing the logon. So the common key between uh, both uh, type of data is the SID. So if we want to get a privileged user account logon, we are looking in, in our index called Fromage at the event ID 4624 from the security event log, but we will use a subsearch to uh, narrow down our results only to a privileged user account, meaning uh, we are querying the source type Active Directory object for object class users having an admin count equal to one. And the common key between uh, both source type will be SID and target user SID. Finally, we will group the results by username. So for example, the user ADM Vader logged on not only to domain controllers, but also on a web server on exchange server. So basically, the tier administration is unfortunately not implemented in this domain. Next example is the Kerberos attack scenario. The Kerberos attack uh, involves the ticket granting service request process of the Kerberos authentication process. Users retrieve TGS uh, for a given service from accounts having a service principal name. Usually, those services are set up on computer accounts. But in some cases, those are user accounts. They are called Kerberos table accounts. The problem is that the TGS has a part encrypted with the service account hash. If the user service account has a weak password, the TGS can be cracked offline on user password retrieved by an attacker. This is especially bad if the user account is privileged. In that case, the 
attacker will perform an elevation of, of privilege in the domain. As a mitigation, please do use a group managed service account, which were introduced by Windows um, 2012, uh, instead of normal user accounts. So we have our Active Directory with user account, unfortunately, with a SPN configured. Um, TGS for this service can be uh, legitimately uh, retrieved by uh, a user accessing to the web server where some of those service accounts are configured. On the other end, what will be more suspicious is uh, are multiple uh, TGS requests for, may, for many uh, user accounts having an SPN within a short period of time. Because with all those TGS, the attacker will try to crack all of them offline. And if he is lucky or a password is weak, he will uh, be able to uh, crack one and retrieve a, a service account secret. Our attacker will then perform a lateral movement with this service account. So let's have a look. We are looking at the sensitive uh, account uh, dashboard. So we, uh, once again, we choose our index uh, fromage. Uh, we are looking at the uh, Kerberos table stable uh, account uh, inventory. So we can tell that there is no privileged account, which is a Kerberos table, but uh, they might have some privilege as a uh, work. Uh, just workstation admin. Um, so uh, we are looking at the source type ID object and uh, the object class user having a service principal name, which is not the KRBTGT account. So if we want to spot some uh, suspicious uh, TGS request, we are looking at event ID 4769 which are uh, recorded on domain controller. And we will just ask for a TGS request for um, a Kerberos stable uh, account, meaning we are looking at object class uh, users and uh, having an SPN from the source type AD object. So uh, first we will have some um, TGS requests are coming from the, for the same service, which look uh, totally logic, occurring on, uh, from one given IP. Uh, on the other end, we have uh, another uh, IP that is uh, requesting many uh, TGS within a short period of time. So this is very suspicious. So you might want to investigate the IP ending with a uh, 56.126. Now we will try to figure out if we, if our attacker um, uh, successfully uh, uh, compromised one account and perform lateral movement with this service account. So we are looking at the uh, authentication event, so event ID 4624, uh, and but only uh, for uh, Kerberos or stable account. So. We narrow down our search for um, ob uh, user object having a SPN. So we run our search, and we see that on the computer, uh, on, the, on the web server, we have um, logon time for occurring for some uh, service account. So service account performing a, a, a logon time for has nothing suspicious. On the other end, on a Windows 10 uh, workstation, there is a service account performing uh, uh, RDP connection. So it's a bit suspicious for uh, a workstation, uh, for a service account performing uh, an interactive logon. So you might want to investigate this workstation. Then we will have a look at the process launch by the Kerberos stable account. So we are looking at event ID 4688. We perform the same uh, sub-search, so we are looking at only Kerberos stable accounts. And we group the results uh, by computer. 
First, we have a uh, process launched by a uh, user having an SPN on a web server. So our Kabaro stable accounts are uh, launching processes related to internet information services application pool, which is totally legit. It's their purpose, they're running this service. On the other end, on the Windows host, we have a logon type, type 10, so we have uh, many uh, process uh, launched. Um, we will see that there are some uh, processes that look a bit odd, such as the uh, Parmigiano process, uh, which is launching uh, PowerShell. So you might also want to have a look at your PowerShell logs on this workstation. And uh, you will also see the creation of um, a net share called Stilton. So you might want to uh, investigate this as well. So as a conclusion, we have just shown you that you can use edit timeline on Windows event logs to find uh, well-known Active Directory attacks. You can use uh, edit timeline alone in order to characterize change main in your Active Directory if you do not have sufficient log history. But remember that it is a snapshot from your Active Directory, not a monitoring tool. So please set up proper uh, event log forwarding. Uh, by reading the dashboard, you can find some uh, persistent mechanism and so on with the uh, AD timeline application for Splunk. And if you do some audit with tools such as Blood on AD Control Pass or Pin Castle, if you find some bad configuration, you can uh, look with AD timeline at what time those but configuration occurred in order to have some uh, context on those, on those modifications. And finally, you can use AD timeline with other data source. For example, if you have a proxy that uh, does uh, Windows integrated authentication, you can look for a service account uh, activity. Uh, or you can also uh, baseline your, your VPN logs with uh, Active Directory. So thank you for listening to this presentation. That's all for me. Uh, if you have any question, uh, please do not hesitate to reach out. Goodbye.